When it comes to dive watches with established credibility among actual divers and not just watch enthusiasts, the colorful Doxa Sub 300 collection has to be near the top of the list. Yet despite its diving watch pedigree, it's a watch that among the general watch public is not as recognized as it probably should be. In this video though, we'll take a closer look at the classic Doxa Sub 300 and discuss the reasons why to appreciate and maybe not to appreciate this orange style creation. Let's jump into it. If you guys want a, another alternative to the watch that we're gonna be looking at here today with a little bit more of an affordable price tag, definitely would recommend checking out the Bull of the Devil Diver, this one executed in orange. In terms of the case dimensions, this one's gonna be even smaller at 41 millimeters, going to wear closer to that of a 40 millimeter case given that nice compact lug to lug dimension. You have the same kind of broadened lugs and case profile that you're gonna find with this Doxa, but for a price range well under $1,000 with that same vibrant orange colored dial, I think this is definitely an interesting one to consider as well. Link down below, available on teddybaldasar.com. Now, as a bit of background, Doxa is a brand that is unquestionably an icon to lovers of dive watches and diving in general, but perhaps more of an unknown quantity for those with less aquatic tendencies. Founded back in 1889, Doxa in the early history was known for dressier watches oriented towards mainstream consumers. But the brand made its name thanks to the innovative and distinctive Sub 300T dive watch, released at Basel World back in 1967. In the late 1960s and 70s, Doxa Sub dive watches were a mainstay on scuba boats and in dive shops thanks to their legibility, durability, and no decompression limits bezel, a feature with great utility for divers at the time. Doxa was also an innovator in dive watch technology, having been early in developing the helium escape valve for saturation diving at around the same time Rolex was developing the Sea Dweller. Yet the Doxa sub is best known for its exploits on the wrist of Dirk Pitt, a fictional character featured in a series of novels by Clive Cussler, himself a serious diver, treasure hunter, and fan of Doxa watches even before becoming a famous author. As if it weren't enough, Doxa watches were also utilized alongside Rolex by the US Navy, French Navy divers, as well as by Jacques Cousteau's team of underwater explorers, making Doxa one of the most legitimate brands in the dive watch space in terms of been there, done that significance. Like many other Swiss watch brands, Doxa was hard hit by the quartz crisis and changed hands several times before being relaunched almost as a micro brand in 2002. Since then, the brand has built up a lot of steam in recent years with new dive watches that look more or less like the original sub watches, including in this modern sub 300, which is at least visually a near one-to-one -one recreation of the original, but upgraded with modern tech as well as a COSC certified movement from ETA on the inside. For the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on the quintessential orange sub 300 known as the Professional, on the iconic Beads of Rice bracelet. To set this watch against the rest of the Doxa collection, the Sub 300 is most true to the original option in this collection, with the Sub 300T offering a more modern build, as well as a helium escape valve, and without the COSC certification, while also being a little bit less expensive. Just wanted to kind of first set the foundation there. The Sub 300 is probably gonna be more true to the classic, and where this brand really is going to connect most of its DNA. So compared to the vast majority of dive watches out there on the market, which tend to resemble either the Rolex Submariner or the Blancpain 50 Fathoms in just terms of that case design, the Doxa Sub 300 is something completely different. At 42.5 millimeters in width with a very short 45 millimeter lug to lug distance, the Sub 300 offers an atypical wearing experience. On one hand, the watch offers presence thanks to the amount of visible steel in this cushion case style construction, but with the shorter lug to lug and especially smaller bezel at 38 millimeters in diameter and the surprisingly small dial at just 27 millimeters, the watch actually feels a bit smaller than you would expect while very much offering a vintage vibe on the wrist. The thickness is also pretty reasonable, measuring at 13.3 millimeters, with at least a couple millimeters stemming from the box sapphire crystal. At the three, a screw down crown is well protected by the wide shoulders of the cushion case and signed with the paint-filled Yeni Fish logo, a nod to Dox's days under the Yeni brand's ownership. Zeroing in on the front of the watch, we can take up the view of the most distinguishing Doxa feature other than the colorful execution, the engraved and paint-filled no decompression time limits bezel. Finish with a brushed inner ring with traditional minute markings and a polished outer ring with standard no decompression time limits. And while this bezel feature is all but useless in the modern diving 
onboarding context where a diving computer is almost universally used nowadays. It's a visually distinctive and interesting element that helps define the Doxa subfamily. In terms of its finishing, the case is finely brushed on its top surfaces and polished almost everywhere else with an overall design that features an intriguing mix of rounded and angular aspects that pair well with catching the light. Now set between the 20 millimeter lugs, the sub 300 leans into the traditional Doxa sub 300 beads of rice style bracelet, which is as much a part of this design as the bezel. This beads of rice is comfortable within the links, but meets at a rather underwhelming stamp clasp with a diving extension and four points of micro adjustment. This area of the clasp is certainly falling behind an otherwise pretty solid bracelet. Although all these other elements of the case and its silhouette are going to be recognizable characteristics, the real identifier for the Sub 300 is the orange professional dial. Despite there being a variety of colors all with their own names, the eye-catching orange has essentially just become the official color of the brand. The story goes that the orange colored dial, which Doxa calls their professional, was conceived after testing in Lake Neuchâtel, Switzerland, where the color proved the most legible and test down to around 30 meters. In subsequent years, Doxa released new colors, each with their own printed name on the dial. But set against the matte primary surface, the sub 300 dial is all but unchanged from the original watch, with larger rectangular hour indices, each with a stripe of loom, separated by lengthy vertical minute markings. General time telling is handled with glossy loom black pencil style hands, with the so-called dwarf hour hand making distinguishing between the two pretty easy. The Doxa word mark and automatic are located in the dial's upper left quadrant, with the model name and professional also printed in that lower right. A frame date window offers some day-to-day -day utility, and loom on this piece is actually quite solid, unlike that of the Sub 200 we reviewed in the past. But there are certainly still stronger options in the price range if this is a major point for you on Loom. Doxa as a brand, but especially with the Sub 300, you're dealing with a design and color scheme that you either love or you hate. It's a huge part of their DNA, but also they're just going to be people that absolutely detest the look of these things. If that is the case for you, I definitely would suggest looking at a few of the different color options that are going to be available. But if you're talking about the one that is the original and probably the most synonymous with the brand, this is going to be the one right here. Transitioning from the unique dial design that certainly stands out from the crowd, the movement within the Sub 300 appeals to an entirely different point of view, offering solid reliability and serviceability with perhaps the most ubiquitous movement on the market from a Swiss perspective, the ETA 2824. This one here is a cost certified variant for guaranteed day-to-day -day accuracy. So that's one of the upgrades you get with the Sub 300 versus the 300T. While it's certainly an off-the-shelf mass market caliber, Edda's 2824 is one of the standard tool watch automatic movements for a reason. With 25 joules, a standard 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, and a 38 hour power reserve, this movement is a proven, durable, and a reliable time teller at a reasonable enough price for inclusion in a watch like this Sub 300, especially when you consider the COSC level of accuracy of aligning within the tight testing parameters. These calibers are incredibly easy to service for watchmakers, parts are going to be available, and that really comes with a lot of upside as you're thinking about the longevity of ownership. So just to unpack, 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz for the beat rate here. Hacking and hand winding functionality is available. Hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position and a power reserve of 38 hours. And in terms of accuracy, just out of the box for COSC, you're looking at minus four to plus six. This one was running basically one second off from perfect time of day. All right, so now to unpack looking at the Doxa Sub 300, where does it necessarily sit in the watch industry? So about 10 years ago, Doxa was in a very weird place as a brand. They have all this history on their side, but in terms of a modern just type of approach to what the brand was operating under, I think they were still kind of finding themselves. Thankfully, in the last five years, it seems like they're starting to really get an understanding of where they need to be positioned, really focusing on what they do best, which is kind of this dive watch heritage that I think is overlooked by some, but of course, for many enthusiasts, they're well aware of it and I think appreciate it. This is a type of watch that is not gonna be for everybody. I don't think this video is gonna do exceptionally well just because of that. I think the sub 200 is a bit more of a mass appealing approach, but if you're getting into the idea of what is the watch for, say a dive watch enthusiast, a dive watch fanatic, where do you need to look when you're looking at the pantheon of dive watches? Everybody thinks about the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. You look at the Rolex Submariner, the Seamaster, things like these watches are quick to come up. But if you're talking about brands with some of the most dive watch pedigree, 
you have to also include Doxa. And this Doxa Sub 300 here with this professional dial, I think is still the best way of getting the full essence of what this brand is all about from a modern context. The price here, it is going to be a little bit steep for some. I'm glad this one does come with a COSC certified movement. The Sub 300T is available and that's only gonna have some minor changes with the case, uh, the crystal, as well as the movement on the inside. It's not gonna be cost certified. Those are a few of the main points that you're gonna have to draw in terms of comparing those two with one another and just basically need to make the decision what's gonna be the best one for you. But at the end of the day, when looking at a watch like this, I don't think you necessarily need to go into that much detail of talking about who this watch is for, who is it not for, I feel like if you're watching this, you understand exactly what side you're on. And typically it's gonna be probably on the both far extremes rather than kind of a lot of people in the middle. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. And I think that's kind of part of the charm with Doxa because these watches were developed and created with a true diving intention. I think that's really ultimately why they have one of the most storied reputations in a cult-like following for those that truly love a properly made dive watch. But all right, guys, that's all I have for this video here today. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I'd love to see your take on just Doxa watches in general, but specifically looking at these Sub 300. What are your thoughts on these? I know that there are a lot of people that love these watches, but also for many out there, these just simply don't make that much sense, but love to see your take down below. Also be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And nine out of every $10 we generate, back in the content that we're creating here to help foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. In addition, definitely check out the Instagram where you can see some great photos of watches. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.